guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ro. I wanted to do this for a while, but I thought that it would be really hard to pick my favorite Christian books. So today I thought I would show you guys books that I think every Christian should read. Basically all of these are apologetics because that is something that I think we should all be equipped with. These are some books that I would recommend if you want to grow with God and learn more because these have changed my life. Okay, so the first book I want to talk about, I do have physically, but I cannot seem to find it anywhere. I'm guessing I must have lent it to someone, and sadly, I don't even remember who I lent it to. So it is the book Culture Shock by Chip Ingram. Now, this one has so many different topics that it talks about. So each chapter is a topic. So it has topic on abortion, homosexuality, sexuality, environment can't remember the other ones but it has a whole range of topics but that book is amazing i loved it he gives so much scientific backup when it comes to you know sexuality homosexuality abortion as well so if you're looking for something that has a broad range of topics and you're interested definitely check it out okay so next i want to talk about more than a carpenter by josh mcdowell and sean mcdowell so this is a father-son duo i'm sure you guys have heard of them this is the book that I'm still reading. As you guys can see, I'm like more than halfway, but I already want to recommend it because it's already giving you so much in this such a small little book. It gives such a punch. It gives you so much information. So this shows evidence historically and scientifically, and it goes into a little bit of detail as to who Jesus is and backs up a lot of the stuff that the Bible says. So short and it's great to probably give to somebody as a gift that isn't completely a believer so if you have any friends who are interested in Christianity or have questions about Christianity I think this book is fantastic so the next book I want to talk about is the reason for God by Timothy Keller this book is so good I don't know how to explain books very well because it's just especially nonfiction you don't want to give too much away but this book is a classic for a reason it's so good basically there's questions like why does God allow suffering in the world how could a loving God send people to hell? Why isn't Christianity more inclusive? How can one religion be right and others wrong? Why have so many wars been fought in the name of God? Stuff like that. These are the questions that a lot of people tend to ask us. So I think that if you are also curious in a way to like explain these things to people, pick this book up. Along the same lines, I would also recommend Tactics by Greg Kokel. This is also a book like the the reason for God. It has a lot of information in here that helps you back up the claims that the Bible says, helps you give the evidence to the people that are asking for it, helps you explain why certain things happened. And out of all these books, this is the one that's, that you can put into practice because it gives you kind of like a how-to, how to approach people, how to ask questions without coming off too aggressive. It just gives you a really tactful way of the title obviously a really tactful way of approaching people who have questions and also like flipping things on them if someone comes up to you and says you know everybody's different there's no such thing as the truth you can actually say is that true it kind of flips the question that the person's asking you on its head to the other person and putting all the pressure that they're trying to put on you back on them not in a mean way not in a manipulative way but in a way to help the other person self-reflect and ask themselves why they believe what they believe. And it just helps you talk to people with grace, with love, the way that Jesus would do so. And I loved this. This is definitely an essential in every Christian home. And along the same lines of asking those kind of questions back to people, we have I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist by Frank Turek and Norman Geisler. Um, this is one of the first apologetics books I ever read. I think it might be the first. And this is a lot heavier. There's a lot of information in here. So it's one of those books that you definitely need to either take notes or reread every so often because a lot is going on in here. This just gives you a lot of evidence of life, of our beliefs. So this does start off with proving the Bible's reliability and proving the historicity of the Bible. And from then on, he kind of goes into other stuff. So this is also something that I would recommend to unbelievers but it is chunky, like I said, so you could you don't want to like overwhelm someone and I think definitely give them more than a carpenter first. There is also a DVD series that Turek does 
with the same title and I highly recommend. That was the first time I heard this. After I listened to that, I had to get the book and the book goes into more detail of what he says. So you could always do what I did and watch it first and then read, but ugh, this is fantastic and I highly recommend. The next one is a classic as well and it is A Case for Christ, The Case for Christ, sorry, by Lee Strobel. This is a classic. I feel like everybody knows this. You probably all have read this. So if you guys didn't know, Lee Strobel was a atheist and he started to do a lot of research into Christianity to disprove it as they tend to do. And then Lee converted because he found too much evidence. And in this book, he basically goes around and interviews a bunch of scientists, archaeologists. Lee Strobel cross-examines a dozen experts who are recognized authorities in their fields of history, archaeology, and manuscript studies. Strobel challenges them with questions like, how reliable is the New Testament? Does evidence for Jesus exist outside the Bible? Is there any reason to believe the resurrection was an actual event? Things like that. So if that sounds up your alley, something that you're very interested in, I highly recommend. This is such a great book. I feel like all these books so far that I've talked about they do have similarities and there's a lot of stuff that they talk about that's the same, obviously because they're trying to give you that evidence, but reading as many as you can really lets it sink into your mind. So the next one is my final apologetics book and then I've got one other book to talk about. So this one is Cold Case Christianity by J. Warner Wallace. This one is a recent read. I just finished it, I think last month. And this is so cool because it gives you evidence-based studies and things like that from a cold case detective's point of view. So Jay Warner Wallace was, I don't know if he still is, a cold case detective and he would obviously, you know, reopen cases to find out uh, who the killer was or what happened, etc. So this book is about going through the gospels of the New Testament and trying to treat them kind of like a cold case because obviously eyewitness testimonies, all the eyewitnesses are dead so he can't go around and interview them there's the the evidence that's there is not here now he goes into each of them with like a cold case like this is what he would do if he had a cold case and then he does like the breakdown of the evidence and how he kind of researched it it's so good there's so much amazing stuff in this that isn't in any of the other books because obviously this comes from a different point of view because he was a police officer i just think this is amazing it has a lot of diagrams and photos so like here we've got the burglar and then all the evidence that he left behind and then he kind of breaks that down shows you what he would do in a cold case situation and then he kind of uses that same conclusion to conclude the story of like the gospels or to you know research the stories of the gospels I hope I'm explaining this properly, but this is fantastic. And the final book that I want to talk about is not an apologetics book, but it is a Christian living book. And again, popular for a reason. I really want to do it again. It's one of those that you can continue to do it because it is an interactive book. And that is The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. So this one is popular. Everybody knows about this. I, I know that. When I picked this up the first time, I did the, the 40 days. I think there's 42 days now. So this book is basically, what is my purpose? Why am I here? And it explains it in such a beautiful way that I don't think any of us have ever been able to answer this question. What a lot of people tend to answer, the purpose of life is fulfilling your earthly duty of being like as good as you can be in the area that you're in. But this explains it in such a different way because it goes back to God, explains that it starts with God. The very first day on here, day one, is it all starts with God. And I love the first line is, it's not about you. And I would highly recommend reading this and also watching the videos. So, for example, the day one has a few pages here that you read. I think it's only like two to five pages that you read. But there is a scanning code here. I forget what these are called. QR codes. And this takes you to the website and you can listen to the sermon for that day. And I highly recommend, yes, the sermon usually goes from like 30 minutes to an hour each day, but it is so rich. It expands on the day that you're reading. And I think it gives so much more fruit to the chapter that you're reading that day. And it just makes everything even more clear. I took so many notes with this. I actually have the companion journal that comes with it because I wanted to write so many notes. I was writing it on a separate paper, but 
the journal is fantastic because it has the title, like so the day, it has the title of the day and it gives you kind of a breakdown of questions that you can answer as you listen. So, so good. Highly, highly recommend and no wonder it's popular. I definitely want to redo this. I either started it during Easter or I finished it around Easter. So I don't remember which one. And I think that it actually really worked because of the 40 days, like during Lent or whatever We I don't do Lent because obviously I'm Christian, not Catholic, but you know what I mean? If you're gonna read it, I definitely think you should read it around that Lent season, but yeah, highly recommend. These are the books that I'd like to recommend to every Christian and even skeptic. And I do think that you would really find a lot of richness in these. I do have a lot of books on my shelf, apologetics books, that I want to get to. These two whole shelves here are full of Christian living and apologetics books, so I have a lot to read. So if there's any that I didn't mention in this video, they're probably back there. I know Mere Christianity is a huge one and I still haven't gotten to that, so that is definitely going to be my next read. So if you do have any other recommendations that you think I might not have, that you think I would enjoy, please leave the comments down below and let me know. I probably will have it on my shelf, but it's always good to know because then I can know which one to pick up next. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Please subscribe to my channel because it helps me with my growth and it helps me reach more people. And I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao.